Hello and welcome to my painting video. In this video I'll be painting a Blood Bowl Ogre. A big gut and man boobs are all you need to be a top athlete in this violent game of Blood Bowl. I have yet to actually play them so I have no idea what four ogres and a little legion of little nobblers are like on the field. I can only imagine it'll be utter chaos as the nobblers look like they would like to be anywhere else. Let's begin. I've primed the model with Wraithbone. I want the model to have vibrant colors and I'll be using contrast paints. Gulliman Flesh is a great base if you want to paint some skin. Because of the size of the model it's easy to check for pooling. You want some shading but not too much. If an area is too light you can cover it with another coat of the same paint. I'll be using Kistler Flesh to even out some of the bigger areas of skin. Next, I'll use Flayed One Flesh to highlight the skin. Alternate between thin lines and bigger areas. Alternatively, you can use Usapti Bone, which is pretty much the same color. For the last step, I'll be washing certain areas with a mix of Folipus Pink and Lamium Medium. About 1 to 4. You want to focus on areas like the nose, lips, cheeks, elbows, and knuckles. The last step really brings some life to the yogurt skin. Alternatively, you can use a more purple wash to give him some bruises or baggy eyes. Painting white cloth is pretty difficult. This was my first attempt, so there is room for improvement. Although I base coated the model with Wraithbone, I will go over it once again with the same color to either fix some areas or even it out. Next, I will wash all the creases with Nuln Oil. You can wash the entire cloth area as it will be covered anyway, or you can try to save some time and just wash what needs to be washed. Palette Witch Flesh is the layer color I'll be using to cover all the cloth. Leave the wash in the recesses and the creases alone. The last step is to use White Scar on the entire raised areas. I kept my Palette Witch Flesh and White Scar very watered down to create a more even cover. This does mean you'll need to do more than one coat. It was quite a challenge to paint white cloth, but I think it looks pretty okay. In the final step, we're going to create some stripes on the shoulder pads and the shoes in the same color. All the leather straps and fur will be base coated with wild wood contrast paint. With the skin tone of the ogres and the white and orange uniform, wild wood is a great fit. I'll be using one highlight, which is crack brown. The leather and fur parts are very small, so I would keep them nice and simple. This is a small step, but the color works really well with the rest. You could try for black leather and fur, which will also work. For the metal parts, I'll be using the same recipe I pretty much use all the time. Maybe a new challenge will be to paint non-metallic, but that's for another video. Base coat all the metal parts with lead belcher. To change it up a little, I will paint certain parts with Balthazar gold. This is to give some variety in the model. For a wash, I usually get Agrax Earthshade, but alternatively, you could use Nuln Oil. I personally like the brown tint of Agrax Earthshade. Highlight all the metal parts with Stormhose Silver. On the big areas, you can use Stormhose Silver to create scratches and give the metal a damaged look. This method is great for metal. On the bronze areas, you could use some Nihilac Oxide to get a verdigris effect. I used Jokero Orange to base coat all the orange parts. The paint has great coverage, so one coat should be enough. Wash all the orange parts with Reichland Flesh Shade. Layer Troll Slayer Orange on all the parts to even out the color and to make the orange brighter. You'll need two coats to cover this orange evenly. The highlight I'll be using is Fire Dragon Bright. I really like this hue of orange and it looks great on the uniform. As a finishing touch, I'm going to paint white stripes on some of the orange parts for decoration. The first step is base coating the skin with contrast paint Orc Flesh. Give a highlight to the skin with Scarsnick Green. Be sure to give a little bit more highlight on the nose, lips and the insides of both the hands and feet. Mix some Scarsnick green with white scar to create a lighter green color. 
highlight the skin and add a little bit more to the nose, lips, insides of hands and feet. Because the nose, lips and insides of hands and feet are a lot lighter, I can now use Gulliman Flesh to add some contrast to the skin. You could decide to keep the entire skin green, but I think this step gives a little bit more life to the Knobblers. The Knobblers are very characterful models and lots of fun to paint. I think I have a good and fast method to paint your small army of runs. As a finishing touch, I would like to add some sporty stripes to some of the orange parts. With Wraith Bone, I will paint on the stripes on the shoulder pad and the shoes. Next, I go over all the white with Palette Switch Flash. To battle damage the painted on stripes, go back to Troll Slayer Orange and paint some small chips on the white stripe on the shoulder pad. The ogre and the little knoblar are now done. All that's left is the base. The first step is to paint the entire base, including the rim, with Steel Legion Drap. The ogre blood bowl field looks like a cracked desert ground. For this I got a ghrelin earth. Paint on a very thin coat and let it dry for a long time. With the raised bone you can paint a line of the playing field on the base. Make sure you have very little on the brush so the line will look nice and dusty. As a finishing touch you can add a little bit of flock to the base. This was a very fun model to paint. The four ogres in the team look great and the Knobblars are very funny. I can definitely recommend this team even if you only want to paint them up. Switching up the orange for red would work very nicely, but as I don't paint a lot of orange stuff, this was a fun variation. Be sure to feed the ogre and thanks for watching.